Hello, ham radio enthusiast. Welcome to ham vlog number 21, or 21. Is that how you see it? I don't know. I'm not going to think about it. Okay, last week someone said, man, you're all over the place. Well, here's the deal. I, I talk from the heart. I speak from the heart. I don't script anything. Otherwise, I would hate what I'm doing, and so I'm not going to do that. But I will give you a little bit of idea what I'm doing. All right, tonight we're talking mostly about my experience with the Elecraft AX1. All right, I am not sponsored by Elecraft at all whatsoever. I've never gotten a penny from them. I've only given them like $2,000 total for the KX2 and this. And I don't think, I don't know if I bought anything else from them, but I've never gotten anything from them, never even asked for them. All right, and I also, I'll talk a little bit about the mountain topper and the little speaker and things like that. Things I'm interested in right now, which happens to be portable QRP on the road. All right. So I really wanted to explain this antenna and why I got it and what my initial feelings are. So the other day I made a video a couple days ago. As soon as I got it, I unboxed it and I went outside and I plugged it up and I made a contact just like that. You know what's really funny about that is that contact, you may have seen it. Go watch the video. I made a contact and the, the guy that, was, that I made a contact with was using an, a Heath kit. I forgot the name of it, but it's a Heath kit. It's an old, old radio, and it was it was going all it was going up and down. It was going all over the spectrum. His signal was wavering down and up and down, and I was kept hitting the spot button. I didn't really realize what was happening until he said he has an old rig, right? And I didn't know what the Heath kit or whatever was until I went and looked it up. What's really funny about that is he contacted me and said, "Hey, I found your video." So I made a contact with him, and he watched the video, and he said it was so interesting to see, to hear what I sounded like on your end. So every, that doesn't happen very often, but sometimes I make a contact and then they contact me and tell me, hey, that's neat because we made a contact and I didn't even contact. So here it is right here. This is the video. It's called Elecraft AX1 Portable QRP Antenna Unboxing. And he wrote me back. He said, hey, Tom, it's Scott KA6 IOM. Found this video. Surprise. I was using an old Heath kit AT1. So he, he watches a video where, where I record us talking how cool is that on CW. All right, um, and he emailed me too, and I, I, I really appreciate these people that use the old radios. I really like the, the people that bring things back to life. I wish I was one of those guys. I just don't have time for it. I, I want to do the military radios. I want to do the old Heath kits. I want to do the old stuff, but, but I only have so much time, so I have to focus on just what I can get done. All right. So if you haven't watched this video where I make this contact using this little tiny antenna in my backyard, 20 meters, I was really excited about it, okay? The reason, the big reason why I was excited about this was because this antenna is not for everyone. I don't want you to run out and buy it just because I made a contact with it. It is what it is. This antenna fits a specific need I have for when I'm traveling, when I only have 30 minutes, lunch hours. I want to put this down on a table and go like this, throw out the counterpoise, make a contact, tune it up, push it back down, unscrew it, and I'm done. That's what I, that's what this antenna is for. In most cases, if I have more than 24 hours, I'm going to camping or something, I'm going to go with a long wire antenna. This is going to do much better than this antenna. But here's here's the problem. I went on that trip last week a couple weeks ago when I went from my house, I went to my mom in Oklahoma, I went to Oklahoma City for two nights, and then I went to Dallas for one night, then I went all the way back to my mom's house, and every single night I said, hey, I wanna operate. But then I would think, 41 feet, how am I gonna get this in the air in the 45 minutes that I have to operate? Or hour and a half, how am I gonna get this in the air, not attract a lot of attention, and the whole time I was lamenting the fact that I never bought this while I was at Hamvention. Because in those cases where I have 45 minutes only, an hour and 15 minutes, if I can just take this, take this, KX2, put this on a table, put this on a little tripod. By the way, this is a camera mount. And this is the AX1 mount. Uh, it's an anything mount, pretty much. So... In most cases, I would take my camera tripod, this simple thing, and I would mount this directly. It fits these types here. Uh, it's kind of bumping into 
all this stuff is bumping into the hardware. But in theory, you could do something like this. Put this on your table, get this separated from your radio, and you would have an antenna ready to go, okay? That's what this mount is for. I highly recommend the mount if you're getting this antenna. But I don't want people to run out and buy this antenna without knowing why. This is a very specific reason. These are for rest areas. This is for when you have a short amount of time, you throw it up, down, and go. That's why I got it. Because I'm going to be able to operate more with this than without it. So I went on that trip. I stayed at my mom's house. So I get there at like 9 at night. I'm like, I want to operate radio. I've got 9 to 11 before I go to bed. Everyone's in bed. Can I operate? No. Because what am I going to do? Am I going to throw a 41 foot thing, thing in the tree and have to bring it down in the dark? No. So I, I didn't operate. The next night, I go to Oklahoma City. Same thing. I get there. We look around the city. We get there five or six at night. And I went, oh, I want to operate. Uh, do I really want to go down and throw up and put this uh, tower up and put this thing on and take 30 minutes to do it and down? And the answer is no. I didn't want to do it. So I didn't operate. The next night, same thing. The next night, we went to Dallas. I'm like, ooh, I want to operate. I want to operate from Dallas. How cool would that be? I want to be in Dallas and get different contacts, right? See what I can get from here. Same thing. The, there's, there was a very limited, limited space. Had I had this, I would have been able to operate. But I had this, and I couldn't because it just takes too long to do it. That's why I bought that antenna. For those, I just wanted to explain exactly what it's for and why I got it. All right. Another problem with this antenna is that I was able to make contacts with it. I went last weekend, and I did a hiking, can a hiking expedition, and I, I made two more contacts with this, just like that. Boom, boom, boom. Two more contacts. It's very good for that. But this is a daytime antenna. It does 20 meters, 15 meters, 17 meters. Those are daytime bands because as soon as the sun sets, you lose 20 meters. You have to drop down to 40 meters, right? This doesn't do 40 meters, so you're not going to be able to use this at night. Think about that. This is a daytime antenna only. So you're very limited. You're, so you were limited before. Now you're limited even more. So I took this out and I went uh, hiking. And I'm going to show you that video in a second. And... I got very poor signal reports, but I got contacts. I got a 439 or something like that and a 549 or something. Anyway, made contacts, not very good. So someone contacted me and said, why didn't you use, why didn't you use the mountain topper? By the way, size-wise, here's the mountain topper. Here's the KX2. But there's a downside. Where's the antenna tuner? Where is it? Oh, it's in here. Antenna tuner, no antenna tuner. Where's the speaker? No speaker. Speaker in here, right? Now, it, ha it has everything else, but that's kind of the problem with this radio is, yeah, it's small, yeah, it's cool, but you still have to add stuff to it. You still need a speaker. You still need a tuner or a resident antenna. You still need a keyer. It's not like, yeah, you're getting a small radio, but you're also having to add a bunch of stuff to it. So you're getting something, but you're losing something. Whereas here, it's kind of built in. So that being said, someone said, why didn't you, why didn't you, why didn't you take your mountain topper with this? Well, I'm going to, but I want to prove that this works first. So I took a simple radio. This is simple to use. It's got the tuner in it. It's got 10 watts. This will hand up to, handle up to 30 watts, I think. So I took this out in the field again. So I've got two videos. One is coming up soon. And I wanted to use this because this is the proof of concept. This is much easier to use. Prove it works. Okay, now I'm confident. Now the next video, the next video will be this. But is this resonant? I don't know, man. I'm going to have to find out. When I, when I hooked up my tuner to this, it wasn't resonant. And it may have something to do with my counterpoise. Um, Ron C. showed me something, and let's talk about that right now. So this antenna has a little screw, and you put the counterpoise wire in here, and you lay it on the ground, or you push it out somewhere, and that's good and all. But Ron C. told me about another solution here, and he sent me a picture, and some people use a tape measure. So if you were to use a, an adapter and, a, and tap it here, push it in here, and put it down, you can use a tape measure and go out and push it out until it becomes resonant. Here's one picture of this, and here's another way that you can connect it. But you can use a tape measure. It's a, it's a common method that other people use. 
and a little bit hard, tricky to figure out. But anyway, okay, so that's about to wrap it up. Um, here are all of my CQs that I've called using this antenna in the last few days, and I've hardly called CQ at all. But even on that little expedition that I did, these top four right here on the 9th of June, four decibel, four decibels, nine and two, I called CQ just one one or two times just to see what would happen. And and they're hearing me. All of these here came from, on 20 meters, came from this antenna. Um, you can take a look at that. All right, one other thing. So I mentioned that the Mountain Topper doesn't have a speaker. The u kits doesn't either. And so I have this speaker, and then I also went out and just bought this 5 or $6 volume control. Now I can change the volume. Actually, I found somebody sent me a link to one of these little speakers that has a volume control inside of it. I wish I would have just bought that. I think it's $20 for this thing alone. I'll put the link in the description, and it has a volume control, which is the simplest thing, but I've got this volume control now. I can control, you, control the volume using this. I don't know. I just don't like to have too many gadgets because it's the more stuff you have, the more stuff you forget. All right. Um, one more thing. I'm going to say I put a lot of stuff on Twitter. I'll put the link right here. Join me on Twitter. I make pictures. I make. I take pictures and stuff I'm doing. Um, here, I just wanted to show you one more thing, a couple things. When we were in, I don't know if I showed you this, but when we were in Oklahoma City, a bunch of the new homes that we looked at had these storm shelters inside of the garages. And so you would, I got down inside. I don't know if I showed you this or not. Maybe I did or didn't. I just thought it was interesting. Inside of the garage, you could climb down here in the stairs. Now that I talk about it, I think I did show you this. Um, they had this sliding door. I thought that was really interesting. Um, I make these little ham cartoons, and I put them on my Twitter. <laughs> and Trust me, I know they're not good. I know they're terrible. I know that. But it's just pure fun. I'm having fun. I like to make fun of myself. I like to make fun of ham radio. So I make these little cartoons. I put them on Twitter. And join me there, and you can read them. You can... <laughs> Some of them crack me up. I crack myself up, actually. I know the drawing's bad, but I do it for fun. That's all it is. It's just pure fun. So join me on Twitter for more behind-the-scenes stuff. And right now, I'm going to show you one more video of an upcoming video I did. I, last, weekend, last weekend, I took the KX2 out. I took this antenna out. I put everything in a backpack. I hiked, uh, uh, hiked 1.5 miles out. It was sweaty. It was mosquito-y. I put on all kinds of DEET. I did everything. I'm about to, I'm gonna make the video probably Thursday or Friday night it comes out. It was horrendously hard to do. I made two contacts with this, answering, I answered probably twice. I made one other uh, contact, but I'm not sure he, somebody else stomped me out, that's it. But I made contact after contact with this as much as I tried. Now let's take a look at that real quick. So we have the antenna. I'm gonna raise it up a little bit more. I decided on the first test, I'm gonna use the counterpoise that came with it. All right, sorry that was a little discombobulated, but that's just the way I do these things. That's just the way it's gonna be.